This is part two of the biochemistry board exam series. The link to part one will be in the description below. Number 11. Enzyme kinetics can be described by what equation? Okay, the answer to this one is michaelis menten equation. So to review lang, letter A, henderson hasselbalch equation, relates pKa and pH. Noi sweetening naman, rate of dissolution. Van Slyke describes buffer capacity. And Charles Law describes temperature and volume. Specifically, this is a gas law. Number 12. In fetal ketonuria, the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase is deficient. Which of the following statements is not true about the condition? Okay, so the answer to this one is C. So, let's discuss first what fetal ketonuria is, or PKU. So, as stated sa question, pag may PKU yung patient, phenylalanine hydroxylase is deficient. So, ano ba yung purpose sa phenylalanine hydroxylase? Phenylalanine hydroxylase converts phenylalanine to tyrosine. Since deficient to sa tao na may PKU, mahihirapan to to produce tyrosine, while ang phenylalanine naman hindi nag-breakdown, so nag-accumulate lang siya sa blood and brain, which ultimately causes mental retardation due to brain damage. So, this is correct. And since hindi naman makasynthesize si patient ng tyrosine, instead of being non-essential, magiging essential amino acid na lang tong tyrosine. So, this is not asparagine. This is tyrosine. And so, anong connect ni aspartame? Aspartame is an artificial sweetener. It's present in NutraSweet equal... So, bakit bawal to ni patient? Aspartame is converted to phenylalanine in the body. So, as mentioned earlier, mag-accumulate yung phenylalanine kasi walang phenylalanine hydroxylase, which ultimately causes brain damage. Number 13. Which of the following is not a basic amino acid? Okay, the answer to this one is C, asparagine. So, asparagine is a polar uncharged amino acid. So, for the acidic amino acids, we have aspartic acid and glutamic acid. For aromatic naman, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. For polar, we have serine, threonine, cysteine, asparagine, and glutamine. And sa nonpolar, we have viglamp, valine, isoleucine, glycine, leucine, alanine, methionine, and proline. Number 14. What are the amide linkages between the alpha carboxyl group of one amino acid and the alpha amino group of another? Okay, so the answer to this one is A, peptide bonds. So here we can see the formation of a peptide bond. Here is the alpha carboxyl group and here is the alpha amino group. And when they react, water is released. So take note that when peptide bonds form, dehydration occurs. And the result is a peptide bond. Ito. And the free groups here, they can react with other amino acids then to further elongate the peptide. Okay, number 15. Edmunds reagent is used to label the amino terminal residue under mildly alkaline conditions. What is the component of this reagent? Okay, so the answer to this one is D, phenyl isothiocyanate. So what happens during Edmonds degradation? So suppose that this is the amino acid chain to be identified. 
when doing advanced degradation, PITC is added to the peptide. The resulting derivative will make the N-terminal peptide bond unstable. So, yung unstable to. So, mas madali tong ma-hydrolyze na hindi naapektuhan yung other peptide bonds. As you can see here. The lab analyst can repeat the steps until maubos na yung peptide and identify na yung lahat na amino acids. So, you, we can still add PITC to this one. Hanggat sa ma chop to. And then again and again. Another method naman to identify amino acid residues is the Sanger method. We use 2,4-dinitrofluorobenzene. And this reacts with the N-terminal amino acid, just like sa Edman. The issue lang dito is that the rest of the peptide is hydrolyzed. So, yan ang disadvantage ng Sanger method. Only the N-terminal is identified. The rest are hydrolyzed na. Okay, number 16. Several different polypeptide helices are found in nature, but the alpha helix is the most common. What bond stabilizes this helix? Okay, the answer to this one is A, hydrogen bonds. So, these are intramolecular hydrogen bonds and are separated by around 4 amino acid residues. So, suppose ito yung amino acid chain. And these are amino acids. The carbonyl oxygen and the amide hydrogen. This is what makes the peptide bond. So, if this was an alpha helix, this is what it would look like. And this would be the, pep uh, the hydrogen bond. Okay. Number 17. What protein structures reverse the direction of a polypeptide chain, helping it form a compact globular shape? So the answer to this one is C, beta bends. So as said in the question, beta bends reverse the direction of a polypeptide chain. So suppose ito yung beta sheets and then alpha helix. This would be the beta bends. They reverse the direction of the polypeptide chain. And what this does is it helps make the compact shape of a globular protein. 18. What specialized group of proteins are required for the proper folding of many species of proteins? I mean, the answer to this one is E, A and C. So heat shock proteins and chaperone proteins, those are the same lang. So from the word chaperone, tagabantay siya sa peptide chain during the folding process. So their function could either be keeping the protein unfolded hanggat matapos yung folding process, and then they act as catalysts din, especially during the final stages na. And they also protect the proteins. So that yung exposed regions hindi masali sa unnecessary interactions and para tama yung pagfold. 19. Many proteins consist of a single polypeptide chain and are defined as monomeric proteins. However, others may consist of two or more polypeptide chains that may be structurally identical or totally unrelated. These statements describe what protein structure. Okay, so the answer to this one is D, quaternary structure. So as you can see in the photo below, yung quaternary structure lang ang may two or more subunits. This is one subunit, one, another one, and another one. Very popular example of this is hemoglobin. Okay, number 20. What protein is misfolded in Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease? And the answer to this one is B. Prion. So this is a normal prion protein, and this is the misfolded one. And kapag nag-interact tong dalawa, the normal prion protein will be converted into the misfolded one. And these two will interact with other normal prions until maging mis misfolded din yung dalawa. Hanggat sa dumami, dumami sila sa neurons sa brain. Eventually, mamatay yung affected brain cells. 
these prions will also cause small holes to develop in the brain. So, parang sponge na yung brain. See, these are holes. And prion disorders, take note that they are not transmitted by viruses, bacteria, or parasites. These are transmitted only kapag nag consume ka ng infected brain or nervous tissue or yung brain tissue mismo is exposed to those with CJD. So, example, may magpapa brain surgery tapos yung tools na ginamit ay from a patient with CJD pala. Because prion proteins are not killed by the normal sterilization methods. So, ayun, that was part 2. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.